Hello, you little monsters. This little monster girl, Desi, coming at ya. And today, I got a brand new monster bite for you guys to enjoy. In light of the holiday, I've chosen a monster that's known for its insatiable appetite. and is also cousin to my monster. So, let's get started. Today's monster bite topic is going to be on my cousin, the Wendigo. A monster known for its insatiable appetite. Which is probably the reason my mom will never invite him over for Thanksgiving dinner. Compared to the Skinwalker, the Wendigo is definitely one of the more well-known Native American monsters. With hundreds of years behind it, it's definitely one of the most feared as well. The Wendigo is described to have the head of a stag with sunken eyes and ravenous looking teeth that look like they would tear you apart at any moment. But despite the way its head looks, the rest of it seems almost frail, being extremely skinny with its skin wrapped tightly around it, as well as being strikingly tall as well. It gives off a horrendous odor that makes people gag whenever they smell it. And some say that it's even the stench of death itself. But don't let its appearance fool you, even if it looks as fragile as bones, it's definitely a lot stronger than it looks. With enormous strength and speed, this monster is definitely one to fear, and definitely one that's hard to escape if encountered. Though in some stories, the Wendigo has also been known to be an evil spirit that possesses people and drives them completely insane. This has resulted in something known as the Wendigo Fever. Some say the Wendigo infects its host slowly, tormenting them as it takes over the mind and body. It begins with a horrendous odor that only the victim can smell. Then they are plagued with nightmares that chip away at their sanity, leaving their minds completely sleep deprived after weeks of experiencing it. Then they'll experience an unbearable burning sensation throughout their entire body, and they usually end up stripping down and running naked into the forest. This is usually the last anyone sees of those cursed by the Wendigo. The few who ever returned from the woods after suffering Wendigo fever have been said to become back completely insane. Another fact about the Wendigo is that no matter how much a Wendigo eats, its hunger is never satisfied. According to myth, once a Wendigo eats another person, it grows directly in proportion to the person it just consumed, making it impossible for it to ever be full. It is an embodiment of gluttony, constantly consuming yet never satisfied, always on the brink of starvation. And while some monsters become docile with age, the Wendigo is definitely not one of these. According to lore, the longer a Wendigo walks the earth, the stronger its powers become. The savage creature can eventually gain the ability to control the weather as well as other creatures. The Wendigo slowly gains the ability to manipulate predators within the forest, helping it track and hunt for its food. Its speed and strength also grow with age, as it does with its ability to heal. Needless to say, this is not a monster that anybody would want to ever encounter. The Wendigo is also an avid hunter, much like its cousin the Skinwalker. But unlike its cousin, the Skinwalker and Wendigo are very different in one aspect. The Wendigo is not a territorial creature. It seems to attack whenever food is near and for no other reason. While the Wendigo will often take shelter in things like caves and holes in the ground, it never seems to attack to protect its territory. Nor does it seem to be a creature that wants to protect the forest. It simply kills and eats because it wants to, and because it's constantly hungry. So in many ways, the Wendigo and the Skinwalker are two halves of the same coin, due to their similarities in background. But like any family, it's pretty obvious that these two would not get along if they had to share the same space. And again, is probably another reason why my mom never invites him over for Thanksgiving dinner, or Christmas dinner or any dinner for that matter. He is not somebody I get along with easily. Because if there's one thing I do know is that I'm protective of my food, and I'm guessing he would not respect the whole writing your name on your own food while it's in the fridge thing. Though there is another similarity that me and my cousin seem to have. 
The Wendigo is also able to mimic human voices, though it uses it to lure people into the forest just so he can mess with them. The Wendigo often lures people from safety, driving them completely mad while it lures them deeper and deeper into the wilderness. This is to either consume them or flat out possess them. This is because he's a big stupid jerk face. But putting my personal feelings for him aside, there's actually something known as the Wendigo Psychosis. While the name stems directly from the lore, Wendigo Psychosis is a really- is a- bleh, can't talk. The Wendigo Psychosis is a very real disorder where people develop an appetite for human flesh. This is a form of can, can, cannibalism is not considered the same as those who consume human meat in survival scenarios, as the lore originally describes. Wendigo Psychosis describes an individual who has access to normal foods source who has access to normal food sources yet feels overwhelmed by the need to eat, a, another, to eat another human. Why can I not talk right now? What the heck is wrong with me? There are even cases where a person has been temporarily possessed by a Wendigo. In fact, all the way back in 1888, in fact, all the way back in 1878, a man was accused of butchering his entire family, as well as eating them. Whether this man was actually possessed by a wendigo, or was just satisfying his own sick needs, has yet to be seen. But one thing's for sure, if he was a wendigo, he's already dead because he was put to, de put to death by authorities due to his actions. Due to how dangerous the wendigo is, there have actually been wendigo slayers in history. Much like the vampire slayers that you often hear in stories. Some Indian tribes were even so terrified of the Wendigos that they even held ceremonies to ward off the evil spirits. Overall, I would rate this monster a definite 8 out of 10 when it comes to my favorite monsters to research. And that's all I have time for today. See you guys next time! Did you guys enjoy the video? If you liked it, please like, share, or subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And now, before I go back under the bed like all little monsters, I'd like to tell you guys, I got my winter coat. And while it doesn't help me camouflage, it will help me stay warm this Thanksgiving. So I hope you guys all have a good turkey day. And I'll see all you jelly beans in the next video. Bye!